I have no enemies. The four famous words that catapulted Vinland Saga into our favorite anime list. It came to many of us as a surprise that the beauty of this gruesome Viking manga didn't come from the rampant, savage characters or the intense battle sequences, but the heartbreaking tales of suffering and love that many of the main characters had to go through. In season 1, for example, it was with Askeladd, and in the most recent season and the seasons to come, it was and will be with our protagonist Thorfinn. The story will largely be told from his perspective. I will mention that this video delves into the manga of Vinland Saga, so if you're not caught up, I highly recommend clicking off the video because nobody deserves to have that masterclass spoiled for them. And if you decide to somehow stay, might as well like the video. Thorfinn's initial struggle was a simple one. Kill Askeladd because he killed my father. It was a relatively simple internal struggle, although he did encounter many obstacles along the way, both morally and literally because Askeladd kept beating the shit out of him. But Thorfinn's quest was preoccupied and obsessed on a single outcome compared to the broader and more nuanced perspective he develops later on. Essentially, he loses sight of everything he does and focuses all his attention on just killing Askeladd, so he doesn't realize what he's doing. He doesn't realize the lives he's ruining, the people he is killing, and the impact all of that is having on himself and on his future. And this failure of realizing what he's doing comes to haunt him when he finally does realize, as after he wakes up to the reality of what he's done, he can't go back to sleep. Literally because he's being hunted by demons in his sleep. When his life becomes only one thing and that thing is stripped from him, so too is his life. Basically, he becomes empty like early in season 2 with nothing to live for and nothing but trees to swing at. So what happens to a man who is numb to the reality of what he's done and who has absolutely nothing to live for? Well, he wakes up to the reality of the lives he has taken, the time he has wasted and the people whose lives he has ruined and understands that he must somehow redeem himself if he is to be reborn as he wishes. After this awakening, Thorfinn develops a mindset that he vows to carry to his grave, the one that was in front of him the moment his father gave him the dagger which stole hundreds of lives. In a world of endless chaotic suffering, a man who has endured the brunt of it all vows to make a change that nobody else has seen in ways that nobody else has thought of. A task so simple yet so impossibly ridiculous given the time period and the state of the world. Thorfinn vows to relinquish his blade for good and to do so in the vast beautiful landscape he calls Vinland. But can the man with the heaviest blade let it drop without consequence? Already in his drive to create a land without swords, Thorfinn faces challenges that in almost every other scenario would involve him having to use a sword. Conflict is resolved with swords, communication is resolved with swords, and hierarchy is built on swords, so how can one survive without one even when ignoring the obvious physical threat that primarily accompanies it? Late in Season 2, Thorfinn uses words and fists to get by. This is only made possible because he's a skilled warrior, but nonetheless, he manages to hold off Snake and almost save Gardar without a sword. I say almost because both Gardar and Arnheid die, but for a cause, because it only strengthens Thorfinn's vow and unites Einar with him. Another person, although vastly different, that shares somewhat of a similar experience. While Thorfinn's main conflict in Season 1 was a physical one with some but limited moral qualms, his conflict moving forward was extremely challenging, especially when we dive into the manga, as repeatedly Thorfinn is pulled into battles of warriors because he was among the fiercest in his heyday. Bro has to hold off Thorkel and Garm without a sword and can do so, again because he's so skilled. But what happens when he is faced with the obstacle that initially made him take up the sword? I'm not talking about Askeladd, although he does show up constantly in Thorfinn's dreams as a symbol for his previous relinquished life. It's when Thorfinn encounters the mischievous Floki, when he loses control of himself for the first time post time skip, and picks up the killing piece of metal that is the sword. Even despite his best efforts, not even Thorfinn can hold back when it comes to Floki. Even a man who seems to be shrouded with nothing but peace and kindness has a side of him that relies on the sword. Hild makes an incredible remark here that sums it up so well and even gives a throwback to what Thorfinn told her all those years ago. She says to always be wary of a wounded beast. I don't know if this is foreshadowing because she speaks directly to Gudrid, who ends up becoming Thorfinn's wife and who may end up seeing the true beast within Thorfinn. At least I kind of hope so in the manga because I want to see the manga progress towards that direction. 
to further elevate Thorfinn's moral struggle. Now, the deeper the wound, the more dangerous the beast, and with every wound, either physical like a scar or especially emotional like the death of a father, comes a beast that wants nothing more than to remedy the wound. But it is up to the man to either tame the beast or to become it. But what about the sword itself? If you think about the man and the beast analogy I just built, you can think of the blade as the beast. And this is even mentioned throughout Vinland Saga, even in the recent chapters with Ivar, which I will get into later. The blade itself appears to have an odd power and draw to it, that pulls men towards it because it disguises itself as the remedy to heal their wounds, when in reality all it does is create more of them both in the wielder and in the victim. The blade is the ultimate deceiver. The wielder sees it as a bandage around his wounds, but it does nothing more than transfer his pain onto another person. Such is the endless cycle of hatred. Hatred is food for the blade and man is the producer of hatred because hatred is another disguised remedy, as Godo says in Berserk. Hatred is the place where a man who can't stare sorrow in the eyes without wavering runs off to. The Vikings have no means of protection against their inner beast. Oddly enough, the sword they wield is their greatest shield. Not only does it protect them from physical harm, but it protects their emotional weakness from taking over them. By chasing the endless cycle of revenge and killing, they gain a false sense of fulfillment when in reality it's only making them emptier. And like Thorfinn, one will realize that the day they drop their sword, or in Thorfinn's case, the day the sword drops from their hand. The sword is not only a weapon to fight, but a weapon for warriors to heal their own wounds, as ironic as that sounds. Think about it, someone like Thorfinn, who has accumulated so many wounds, both physical and psychological, pushes the sword away but the thought of the sword looms ever so faintly in his mind. Would it not then make sense for his character to at least have another confrontation with this desire? After all, he still hasn't fully recovered from Thor's death and Floki still lives. We've already seen him lose himself once and it's entirely possible that it happens again, especially if something even worse happens, and I'll get to that later. What's more interesting of a theory, and many in the community have already mentioned this theory, is the possibility of Thorfinn's family being the necessary sacrifice for him to lose his humanity again. I personally think this would be crazy, but it's obviously a speculation at the end of the day. But if that were to happen, where would the story go and how would it end? How would characters like Hild and Einar progress with their leader becoming a different person? Would Hild even let him live? How would Einar change as a person? given the experiences he's gone through. The recent chapters of Inland Saga have me pondering all these questions as it seems like war is ensuing, yet we still haven't gotten Thorfinn's perspective. Ahem, <clears throat> due to my lack of consistency uploading videos, the new chapter came out and it kind of gave us a Thorfinn perspective. So I guess ignore that last point. The obvious concern for Thorfinn once he realizes how badly he messed up with the Lanu is his immediate family who thanks to the absolute boss that is Cornelia is still safe. But what if harm were to fall upon Carly, Gudrid, or his newborn child? If even one of them were wounded, would he truly have no enemies after that? It's not even a matter of would he have enemies, it's would he be able to control himself under such a circumstance when something he worked for his entire life is burning to the ground, when his vision of Vinland is crushed like his humanity once was, won't the wounds of his past reopen and bleed once more, longing for the grip of a hilt to help seal them shut once and for all? This is the central dilemma with Thorfinn's character, and a conclusion I am thoroughly looking forward to seeing. However, what concerns me is Yukimura's comments suggesting the proximity of Vinland Saga's ending. So how would this nuanced, complex protagonist conclude if we are already close to an ending. How will he save Vinland without a sword, despite having to go up against the Lanu, who right now don't seem to care? Another problem with Thorfinn's ideology is the people he's bringing with him. Mainly I'm talking about Einar and Hild, and you can throw in his family if we assume that they're gonna live. Something I theorized about personally a long time ago was the possibility of Thorfinn's child becoming what he once was, a merciless, vengeance-driven sword wielder. But Thorfinn's actions moving forward are going to greatly influence this child, whether it's Carly or the newborn, or even both of them. And as I mentioned, Einar and Hild as well. If you think about it, both these characters, Einar and Hild, haven't really come face to face with the reality of the Viking world, let alone the relatively small conflict they're struggling with on Vinland. Yes, they've had their fair share of bad experiences, but neither of them have been to war, 
to see that the hearts of men will not simply give up the sword because they are attracted to the sword. Only Thorfinn if anyone truly knows this fact. Compared to what Canute might one day bring to Vinland, this conflict with the Lanu should be an easy resolution for everyone there, so long as they have swords. Should Thorfinn take up a sword willingly or not, how will Hild and Einar be impacted? Since we've already seen Einar lose himself multiple times in the farming arc, is this foreshadowing for what his character might entail in the future? Will he have another rage attack like Thorfinn did with Floki, or like he did personally in the farming arc? As for Hild, even though she's forgiven Thorfinn, the same problem remains. Will she even be able to control herself if Thorfinn goes back to being the vengeful man who ruined her life, even if it's for a second? There are two possibilities at the end of the day. Thorfinn picking up a sword again, and Thorfinn somehow getting by without using a sword. Either way, his actions will determine a great deal of the story, as many side stories and characters revolve around him. His descent into chaos will take the story with him, as will his maintenance of order if that's how it ends up going. But a possibility I haven't brought up yet is one that's probably my favorite because it involves Canute, who is highly controversially my favorite character in Vinland Saga. Canute's influence is evident and the parallels he's built with Thorfinn are as obvious as Thor's death was. Canute will play a big role in the conclusion of Vinland Saga and one can only imagine how him and Thorfinn will settle their currently small conflict. What I thought would be an interesting possibility would be an alliance with Thorfinn and the Lanu to take on Canute once he inevitably arrives. But an interesting question arises with Canute. As we've discussed, the world of Vinland Saga is a cruel one where men take up the sword to shield the holes in their hearts. In a way, aren't these men victims of the world as well? just as the innocents that Thorfinn's responsible for killing were. You see, both Thorfinn and Canute are leaders that unite the weak and wounded. As Thorfinn is the sword that defends the innocent victims from suffering, Canute is the sword that defends the innocent victims of war. Why are Vikings victims of war, you ask? They're just blood-hungry demons and that's what they're illustrated as? Well, wrong, because Yukimura actually portrays them differently, and Canute is the kind of character where you can see all this from. I talk about this a lot more in this video, but to sum it up, basically Vikings go to war because their creator made them incomplete beings with no control over their fate, and they are beings who, as I mentioned in this video, have gaping holes in their hearts that need desperate filling. Basically an army of gutses without the giant sword, and without the immense strength. These two men are both swords, but one chooses to attack while the other defends. But can a sword truly heal a man, or is something else necessary? If Canute loses his humanity as a result of making many sacrifices, that of which he's already made plenty of, will he even be a sufficient leader for the war-torn Vikings, or will he be yet another tormentor? On the other side, if Thorfinn becomes too naive and loses sight of the grim reality of the world, will he be able to lead innocents like Ivar who are currently hungry for revenge? Speaking of Ivar, chop up that like button like Ivar's arm got chopped up in the recent chapter. The author of Vinland Saga, Makoto Yukimura, has mentioned in an interview that he wants to conclude this story in a happy way, as unlikely as that is given the historical fact. However, Yukimura might really follow through and create a happy ending, especially given that he's also mentioned that the story's ending is near. If that really happened, I'm not gonna lie, it would suck. I personally feel a story like this needs strong closure to its harsh themes of love and life, and those themes can't exist without their counterparts of hatred and death respectively. To write an ending without these counterparts to me would be the story's biggest flaw. And I don't need another one of my favorite series getting a controversial ending. But it really is interesting to wonder where the story will go and which sword will emerge victorious between Canute and Thorfinn. Regardless, let me know your thoughts on Vinland Saga, on Thorfinn's character and where he will go in the future. I think it's very interesting to theorize about it as this character could go in many different directions. I just hope it is the right one.